Hello and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve. In today's episode, I'm super nasally and we take an in-depth look at the saturation versus saturation curve. And last but not least in our curves, we have saturation versus saturation. If you've been following along, you definitely have the gist by now, don't need to be told what that means, but if you haven't, and as always with the verses, basically the first part is what you're selecting, the second part is how you're adjusting it. So in this case, we're gonna be selecting levels of saturation and adjusting how saturated that is. And where does this come in handy? Let's look at this example shot. What we've done is we've done our primary corrections and what we've done here on this node, if I re-enable it, is we've increased the saturation and all around saturation has been increased. But what's happened is this uh, is really saturated and maybe too saturated. And you can see this on our scopes, our yellow is going really far out to the yellow. Now in this example, I would actually be okay with it because that draws your eye to that saturated part, i.e. the subject, so that's actually kind of fine. But you can see that the yellow is far more saturated um, than our green values. Let's say we wanted to even those out. Now there are other ways of doing it, but this is how you can do it using saturation versus saturation, and it'll get you to realize um, what these tools do. So what does that mean here? Left is not saturated, right is fully saturated, i.e. left would be in the center of our, of our vector scope, and right would be all the way out there. So if I go ahead and set a placeholder so things that are halfway saturated and below won't get affected, and I pull our most saturated point right down, not a whole lot is happening yet because nothing is actually that saturated. But if I take our placeholder point here, let's make sure it's set back to one, and start to move that left and right, Looking at our scopes more than anything, you'll see that what happens is, as we pull that in, first, really saturated areas start to get reined back in. See the way our yellow value, the, look at this spike on our vector scope, that first starts to get pulled in before anything else, because that's the most saturated part. And then as I go really far, then the next most saturated thing in the image starts to get pulled in. And then if I add another point and really start to pull that in, everything gets pulled really far in. But what I can do then is knowing this, I can match the level of saturation between the two around there. And that basically has us at a point where this yellow is as saturated as this green. So you don't have a high amount of different levels of saturation in the image. Um, a second use for this would be, for example, if I reset that, I just make sure I'm on a new node for this too. On this node, uh, set a kind of boundary for, I don't want anything going beyond this level, this much saturation with this kind of a roll off. It means if I come back into this node beforehand and start increasing the saturation, you can kind of see that we have prematurely started clipping off the amount of saturation. So if I turn that node back off, you'll see it's allowed to bleed out into higher levels of saturation. So you can also use it as a kind of a boundary for just how saturated your image can get. And you could also basically make your image look kind of old school and vintage and washed out by you're jacking up the amount of saturation that there wants to be but there's nowhere for that color information to go. So you can kind of get this washed out pastel color look going on uh, by doing that too. So not only is there uses for technical side of things, but there's also uh, very creative uses for saturation versus saturation. So that's it in a nutshell for that. It's selecting a level of saturation and determining just how saturated or desaturated that value may be. And with that, that's all of our curves covered. So hopefully, you find the curves as useful as I do because they're super powerful, super quick and easy to use once you understand what each graph is and what the versus versus means basically.
I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in this tutorial? Let me know in the comment section below so I know to cover it in a future video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads. My name is Lee Dalton, this is DaVinci Resolve A to Z. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.